I'll just explain to these lovely people. My name is Mistress Palmer and I'm the mistress of Palmer's Farm. I have this little girl to fly for you this morning, but before we do, I do have a message for you from Master's Health and Safety. When Millie flies, please don't put your hand up as she flies past you. I know it sounds silly, and how old are you all? 13. 13, right. If I tell you that I had a group a few weeks ago of 16, 17 year old students from a different country, um, where one of them actually put his hand up to catch her as she flew past twice. You'll understand why I have to um, reiterate again. So, that's the boring bit. Let's have a, a wee bit of fun. So Millie is an owl. She flies completely silently as all owls do. But what type of owl she is depends on when you live. My that bad because not these bad. birds have been known by three different names in British history. Now the first name they were known by, we have to go back a very long way. All the way back to medieval England where we have George and the Dragon, knights in shining armour. And then these birds were known by a very sinister name, but I'm not just going to tell you what it was. I need to see if it'll work first. Are you on a school trip? And I'm making you do some work. I'm rotten, isn't I? What do you mean, yes? <laughs> okay, I only need you to use your imagination. I'd like to go away, I didn't call you. I'd like you to imagine it is a beautiful, warm summer night in medieval England. You're walking down a lane. On one side of you, you have a small woodland. And on the other side of you, you have open land of grasses and meadow flowers. Because it's a clear night, you have the light from the moon and the stars guiding your feet as you walk. And as you walk, you have a very sinister encounter. Right. You ready? One, two, three. Not that way. That way. This white thing glides past you completely silently. And then she lands. And she makes a noise that will freeze your blood and terrify you to your soul. For the noise she makes is, is this. Thank you. Can we have it a bit louder? That's better. Ooh, that was good. <laughs> now, if you've just seen this white thing fly past you making that noise, would you think that you'd maybe just seen a ghost? Because that's what our ancestors believed. And so they called them the ghost bell. Not only were they called the ghost bells, but it was actually believed that they were spirits. Our ancestors were terrified of them and the name stays with them for hundreds of years. Boop! Got you two. I love what I do. Oh, I forgot to tell you. She'll get close. So we are now in a different period of history. The name changes, for we are in good old Tudor England. And in Tudor England, we know these birds by a completely different name. Because in Tudor England, 
We call these birds the love owl. Oh, I know. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Why are they called the love owl? Well, as I bring her round, have a look at the front of her face. It will tell you everything you need to know. On the front of her face, she has a beautiful, perfect what shape? Oh, well she faced me then. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful heart shape. Now this heart shape is there for a reason. Can you see that? Okay. Yeah. The heart shape is there for a reason. Actually, it's there for two reasons. Reason number one. It helps the guys remember just how gaga and daft the ladies can be. Because girls, we see these beautiful birds and the heart shape on the front of their faces and we can't help ourselves. We all look at our, and all the girls go, that was rubbish. Right. Girls. We see these beautiful birds, blah, 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 and we all go. Ah. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> the real reason why we have this heart shape on the front of our face is because that heart shape is her version of these on us. What do you call these? Ears. They use that funny word as well. What do you call these? What do you know them as? Ears. Ears. Right Can I get any sense out of you? Probably not. No. More than likely not. No. What do you call these? Muggles. Apart from that. Ears. Do you know them as ears? Oh, good grief. <clears throat> do I have to educate you? I'd like to tell you everything. Yeah. They're glasses holders, uppers. Come on. <laughs> of course they are part of our ears. But do you know what their function is? They're sound catchers. As the sound waves come towards you, they go up the side of your head. Our sound catchers redirect the sound waves down into your ear holes and into your ear drums. And you can hear, will you stop? Obviously not. <laughs> now then, this is the interesting bit. Now, if you do this right, it will work. If you fluffed it, it means you did it wrong. Right. Take the shape of your sound catchers. Like this. Put them both together like that. And now put it in front of your face. What shape should you have? Well done. A heart. So our sound catchers are at the side of our head, connected to the rest of our ears. Millie's sound catchers are in the front of her face. Well, where are her ears then? Oh. Before anybody gives me some suggestions, <clears throat> can I just tell you what we've had this week? And these were from the grown-ups. You're going to love these. Right. Here. 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 Mm -mm. Tummy. Under the wing. And on the foot. And like I say, that was just from the grown-ups. Right. Where do you think her ears might be? Her sound catches are here. Okay. So where do you think her ears might be? Near her eyes, okay. Yes. By here, okay. Where do you think? Near the nose. Near the nose like that, okay. Where do you think, mistress? Have you been to one of my shows before? No. Go home. <laughs> <laughs> the lady is right. Her ears are in the same place as ours. And she has one ear slightly further back 
are lower down than the other one. So she has wonky ears. Oh. Does that mean we've got wonky ears as well? It does actually. How do I know we have wonky ears? I see there are a few of you who have glasses. Do you remember when you went to get your brand new glasses from the optician and you were all excited? You, you thought, I'm going to look great in these. And you went into the optician and you tried your glasses on and you were gutted because they sat on your face like that. Because your glasses were manufactured square. Your head isn't. And then your glasses were adjusted and now they sit straight on your face. I guarantee you, if you take those glasses and you put them on a flat surface, it doesn't matter what way up they are, go away, I didn't call you, they will rock. But why do we have wonky ears? Quite a good reason. It helps us triangulate or pinpoint the source of the sound. And Millie needs to do that because Millie hunts by sound. I am not ready. Buzz off. I'm ready now. <laughs> Come on. She uses her eyes for something else. What do you think she uses her eyes for? Well done. Can I just squeeze in here? Millie, jump, I'll catch you. <laughs> Millie. She uses her eyes to see where she's going. Now, would it be fair to say that we have been brought up being told that owls with dark eyes are nocturnal hunters, nighttime hunters? Yeah? Right. Owls that hunt during the day are different. They're called diurnal hunters, and we can tell the difference with them because they have amber or yellow eyes. Just to confuse all of you, she's none of them. She's something completely different. Millie is what we call a crepuscular hunter. Or as it was explained to me by a lovely French lady yesterday, in France, the way they describe crepuscular or a crepuscular hunter is the time between the dog and the wolf, which means the hours between when the dog stops hunting and the wolf starts. So she will come out to hunt around about twilight, just as the light is starting to change, all the way through the night and into the next day. 